this is okay for Sunday, <laughs> which is known <laughs> as uh, Palm Sunday, Jesus triumphant mm -hmm. entry into yes. um, Jerusalem, praise God, where people laid palm on uh, his um, virgin coat that he rode in and um, mm -hmm. calling at the 31st, which is the fifth Sunday, is what most people call Easter. We call it Resurrection Sunday uh, mm -hmm. that is celebrated. So we just thank God for this mm -hmm. season. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, this area of Charlotte's in full bloom. Uh, I guess by some people, we're officially in spring today, last night. Uh, some people say tomorrow. So, but we're officially in bloom, have been for about a month now. Mm. And um, it's, it's blooming fast. Praise God. We yeah. have a bad winter at all. So, we give all the glory and thanks to God. I mean, around the country, it's some uh, devastating weather. Mm. Yeah, people are experiencing tornadoes and mm -hmm. uh -huh. houses houses sinking out in California and um, snow, uh -huh. um, just blizzards, all kind of different things. I don't know if you keep up with it, but uh, I try to watch national news. It's um, I thank God for where we live, and I thank it, God for being a blessing. He's just a blessing to us. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to um, Pastor Kevin Winston. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Apostle Stanley, uh, Minister Jackie, uh, Dr. Sherell, and uh, uh, Minister Stephanie. I thank you all. I thank the Lord for the encouragement. I thank the Lord for the grace that he's placed on my life I, uh, without the encouragement of Apostle Stanley to continue with this and to be more diligent about understanding dreams and uh, and teaching what I know. I don't think I'd be uh, probably where we are today and so on. I, I know it's the, uh, the mercy of God, the grace of God upon his life that he saw uh, something God was doing in my life and pointed it out and he encouraged me to stay with it and uh, uh, and so here we are today. So I'm grateful to Apostle Stanley for his encouragement. And thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, I apologize for not being here on last Wednesday. I was ill. I, I don't even like saying ill, but it's, it was a battle. I, I think I told Apostle Stanley here some time ago, maybe a year ago. I said, I think my body is, uh, I said, could it be possible my body is fighting against me, warring against me? And he said, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I said, yeah, it seems like I'm in a war. And sometimes it's my own body. It looks like it's, it's attacking me, fighting against me, trying, trying to restrict me and, and, and uh, trying to uh, bring depression and oppression upon me. And mm -hmm. so, um, so it's a constant battle. It's the battle from the outside and the battle from within. Uh, uh, this old man that's, that, that does, doesn't want to stay dead and all that comes with that, the the, um, the the afflictions of the body. But I'm encouraged tonight. I'm encouraged. I we were, I was saying earlier to Mr. Jackie and um, uh, Minister Betty that uh, uh, the song from James Cleveland, I have not come this far. You know, I I I'm I haven't come this far. I'm I'm not tired yet. I've <laughs> I'm not tired yet. I've come this far. You know. But I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of the name of the song. We used to sing it. As a... I've come this far by faith. No, no. Uh, uh, I, I no ways tired. No I don't waste feel time. no ways tired. I don't yes. feel no ways tired. It's an old okay. Baptist song. I don't know James Cleveland, but uh, yeah, I don't feel no ways tired. And and James I, Cleveland. Yes, I, and I well, don't. You would know don't. that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't feel no ways tired. I mean, I. Uh, you know, some you we get knocked, we we get knocked on, but not and knocked down, but we get right back up. You know, that's so right. Thank you Lord for that, and so like uh, the thank you Lord wobble. Right, one more time. <laughs> I say like the weevil wobble. We don't touch the ground. <laughs> we don't touch the ground. We keep going. We keep going. The energized oh, bunny. Good. Just keep going. Keep pushing forward. 
You know, the military, yeah. they used to tell you, keep moving. Keep If you can keep That's your feet right. moving, I don't care how you how tired you feel upward, keep your feet moving. As long as you keep that forward momentum, you're going to make it to where you need to go. So, Amen. Nobody told you the road would be easy, but he didn't bring you this far to leave you. To leave you. That's it. No, That's it. And there's another one that's similar to that, but we won't get into that. Dr. Sherelle would probably say, okay, I'm the singer here. So y'all stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she wouldn't say that. She's too old. To say but uh, I'm excited about dreams and about this uh, third um, class on dreams. I posted a dream in the chat room. You can download it and take a look at it. I, I think I spoke earlier, and maybe the first ses session about dreams. Some dreams are an enigma. They're hard to understand. Uh, you can get people to look at it and interpret it, and they give you their explanation, what they think the dream means. And you still walk away from it thinking, well, you know, that was good, but that wasn't it. And so uh, the dream I posted, I think it's from 2018. I have not been able to get a release from the interpretation of that dream. And I've submitted it to many people. Uh, if you, um, uh, you know, some of the streams, I'll put it that way, streams that I have an opportunity to, to flow in, uh, like Bethel and some of the people from Bethel in Redding, California, uh, uh, people who call, call themselves, and I believe they are prof prophets and prophetess and people who have um, spiritual insight. I've submitted it to, I, I know hundreds of people. And uh, I still haven't been able to um, get a release from it. And I'm, I'm not uh, alone in that. I think John Paul Jackson talked about he had dreams that uh, he had not been able to get a uh, understanding of what the meaning of it was. And so uh, so I posted it uh, just to um, be transparent and, and kind of bear my soul for some of the things that I that I struggle with dreams. And and to just let you know, even though you do this and you've been doing it for years, there's still things that you don't understand, things that I don't understand. There are things that I call Apostle Stanley on and say, hey, I had this dream. Uh, can you give me some clarity on it, some insight? And we'll, we'll bat it around for a while and uh, hang up and talk two days later and still mess with it and see if we try to come to an understanding. I try not to interpret too many of my family dreams, and that's because I'm so familiar with them. That is, can, it can kind of skew the dreams sometimes, so I'll submit those to other people. I may look at it and give some, uh, some um, you know, uh, checking out some of the symbolism and say, well, you know, think about this or that, but for the whole Thing of the dream, uh, the, uh, I'll I'll just give it to someone else and have them look at it because when you when you're familiar with a person, mm -hmm. and um, you you it's almost like prophesying to your wife or prophesying to your children, um, you know it's like what part of it is, uh, you you saying what you know about them and what part of it is the Lord actually showing you? You kind of you kind of all merged together, so. So I, I, as a practice, I do that. And I think Bill, um, uh, this prophet from Florida, not Bill Bright, I think uh, Hammond, uh, Dr. Bill mm -hmm. Hammond. Yeah. yeah, he talked about how he did. He doesn't prophesy to his family. Uh, he doesn't prophesy. And he prophesied some services I've heard he was in. He prophesied to everybody in the church, you know, over 100 people. But he wow. said, I, I don't prophesy to my family because I'm too familiar with them. And so mm -hmm. I kind of take it on that as far as when it comes to dreams uh, because of the familiarity. Some may do do it well. Some may feel comfortable doing that. But I, I, I go for I, I want to go for authentication. I want to go for the for what the Lord is actually saying and not be uh, um um, influenced by my familiarity with my family. And so that's why. Now, some of my distant relatives, I, I, I'll, I'll mess with some of their dreams, but my close family, my my son, daughter, daughter-in-law and whatnot, no, I don't do it. And speaking of daughter-in-law, uh, uh, Minister uh, Stephanie had a prophetic dream, and we talked about that, uh, about my daughter and my daughter-in-law and son. That, And in the dream, she just to kind of advance it really quickly, she prophesied, she says she dreamed that they were going to have a baby girl and um, and that they were going to name her uh, or someone going to name her little Kelly because my wife, you know, that's her nickname, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And so that was a few months back that she, she told me that dream. I have it written down. I think it's a voice note. And uh, last, oh, three weeks ago, 
my daughter-in-law told me that she was pregnant and that she's having a baby girl and he and she is due in June or July. So yeah, so a prophetic dream that came to pass, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, and dreams can be prophetic when you're when you're when you're dreaming a lot and you're dreaming outside of your just immediate family. It's, it's there are times that you will have dreams that would be uh, about other people, about other situations, other problems, other solutions to problems. I have a dream uh, that I want to share with you that I had last night. Very simple. In this dream, I, I saw this guy. Um, um, I couldn't tell his his uh, nationality. But I, I saw him shutting down the, the the power grid in his in his dream. He actually just mm -hmm. he, whatever he did, it, the whole power grid went down. And so I'm like, Lord, okay, um, I don't want this to come to pass because in, in dreams, God would sometimes show you things that uh, that that could happen if you don't pray, if you don't intercede. So immediately I start praying about that uh, because I know uh, here in Texas we've had our grid shut down because of a storm. So I know that it's possible for it to shut down and it can be an accident. It can be some nefarious thing behind it, uh, uh, which you just don't know. So I share that with you that uh, I saw that. I saw the individual can really, really make out his face. Um, but I, I know he was in a place where and it was a he, he was in a place where he could, he could shut down the grid. He had blue jeans on. And um, it, it caught everyone by surprise. But I don't know what state it was in. So that's the dream from this morning about three o'clock. Amen. All right. Any comments about anything before we get started? Oh, one, one more additional thing about dreams and interpretation of dreams and dreams that you submit to people to interpret, to look at, to, to, to uh, 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 analyze, myself included. If you, if you get a dream and the dream does not line up with what you believe, in your spirit, what the Lord is saying, then you you have three options with that dream. You can either um, uh, uh, discard it. I like to say tie a string to it, put it on a balloon and let it fly away. Or you can put it on the shelf and wait. Or you can just look at the dream and then interpret it yourself. And and in that, I, I my encouragement to people is that when you have a dream, be the first person to interpret your own dream. Look at it, examine it, and you do your best. And if you if you don't think that you have the right understanding of the dream, uh, share it with someone else and see if they would, can can give you some insight on it. But don't ever um, don't ever take an interpretation of a dream, even if it come from me, and say, "Well, you know, this is this is this is thus said the Lord," because it may not be. Right. I'm 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 subject to 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 miss it just like anyone else. But the thing about interpreting dreams, prophesying words of knowledge, is that you if you're going to be proficient at this, you're going to have to put yourself out there. You can't play it safe at home and just say, oh, I knew that, you know, mm -hmm. after someone else has revealed it, two or three people have said it, you know, you, now you know it. You know, if you're going to be good at this, you're going to be better at this, you're going to be proficient at this, then you're going to have to step out onto the water with Jesus, you know. And that's that that includes prophesying, that includes words of knowledge, and that includes uh, uh, interpreting dreams. Sometimes by uh, a, a word of knowledge, a, a dream can turn into a word of knowledge. A dream can turn into a prophecy. You know, and many times I've had dreams uh, where, where a person was telling me in a dream. And as I'm uh, looking at the dream and interpreting the dream, uh, doing my best to, to, to uh, give the interpretation of the dream, it turns, I, I'll stop interpreting the dream and start prophesying. And I, that is weird to me, you know, because it wasn't, I had no intention of prophesying. But it, it it turned out that way. And so it goes back to uh, what we were talking about in, in uh, Acts chapter 2. I'm gonna, I want to read that scripture again before we get into the lesson. Uh, chapter 2, verse 17, it says, In the last days, let me read it out of King, J King James Version. I like that. It's more poetic. Uh, verse 17. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Mm -hmm. And so we know that this is the last we're living in the last days. And mm -hmm. so and the Bible says in the last days, 
God's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. How many of your sons and daughters are prophesying? I know my children, my grand, my, uh, my, my um, daughter-in-law, you know, and, and my daughter, uh, and they don't prophesy in a way like we used to see in church years ago where they stand up in the church and, and, and they're, they're, you know, people speaking in tongues for a little while. And then they, you know, I, I heard one bishop from Africa, he was talking about prophecy. He said, why don't you just tell what God is showing you and, and stop walking around or jumping around like you're sucking on the hot pepper. <laughs> I mean, he describes so many people I used to see prophesy. And so he said, just tell what you see. And so my, these young people that I'm, I'm coming in contact with, my daughter and others, you know, when they prophesy, they just talk to you. They just, they are talking, you know, they just telling you what happened, what, what, what the Lord is saying. And I think it's so neat because it seems like it's been a, 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 a change, an evolution in, in how we do church and how we do the uh uh what's the word i'm looking for the delivery the delivery yeah of of, of 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 these grace gifts and they are grace gifts uh that god has given us and how they deliver people deliver them to to the body of christ and to the world and so i i, I love it and so they the sons and daughters shall prophesy young men shall see vision men will see in visions i get people who called and uh, uh, some of them early in the morning and I, I had to really put a, a a block on my phone, not a block, but a time limit. Do not disturb. And it doesn't come off until seven o'clock because I was getting calls at, you know, four o'clock in the morning. I think the last one I received was four o'clock in the morning from a lady. And so, you know, you have to, you have to give yourself some, you have to put, put restraints and boundaries uh, on, on these things, especially when you, when you put yourself out there and you, and, and God is using you and he's giving you, uh, you know, some favor in the area of dreams, prophecy, words of knowledge. Um, I, I, people are interested in this. That's a, that's an interest in the supernatural and, uh, and, and people, unless you put some boundaries there, people, people will call you four o'clock in the morning. People, people are coming to you while you're sitting in service and 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 ask you about a dream, you know, like I'm I'm enjoying the service and and you hear this whisper behind your head, hey, brother, brother Winston, you know, like yeah, I had a dream last night. Can you wait till after service, brother? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. You know, it's like, but people they they are so excited about what God is showing them and they want to know what 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 should they do. And so uh, I, I would encourage you all, uh, you know, from these three classes, I know it's been limited, but uh, take up the mantle of just uh, doing dream interpretation. Just put yourself out there, try to do it and, and see, get the reaction from the person who's, uh, who you are interpreting the dream for and see what they say if it's, it's, if it's there. And, and, and partner with other people, find someone that you can, you can bounce things off of. With me as my wife, it's Apostle Stanley. Uh, it's another brother, another prophet from from New Orleans, uh, Baton Rouge, named uh, Nelson. You know, I, I was sending him dreams and talked to him about dreams, and it's amazing how uh, uh, my wife, who who doesn't even really in, involve in the interpretings of dream, interpreting dreams, I'll tell her my dream, and it's amazing how God would just give people insight, and He would give her some insight about the dream. And I'm like, "Yeah, that's right. How come I didn't see that? I'm the one who to interpret dreams, and here you, you know." So <laughs> I, I love it. I love it because God is using all of His children that want to be used and making Himself available to be used. And so I just, you know, I'm parking right here on dreams. I mean, that I see that that's where God is is giving me more grace and and more insight and more favor. And so I'm 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 doing like uh, Apostle Sandy told me years ago. I'm I'm going for it. I'm 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 pursuing it. I'm asking. I'm asking God to give me more dreams, and I'm asking God to give me understanding of what you're saying about dreams. And so that brings us into our Bible study uh, tonight, and we'll talk about twenty most uh, twenty most common dreams that people have. You know, if you have an opportunity to uh, uh, get a book from. Uh, uh, online or through uh, Amazon. There's a great book by James Gall, Dr. James Gall called uh, Dream Language. Mm -hmm. I, I When I went through the school uh, school of ministry in Bethel, uh, Redding, California, he was uh, one of the teachers and um, and they were given, he, he gave away a free book, he gave me that book called Dream, Dream Languages. 
And so it it, it was very key in, in helping me to understand more about dreams. And of course, John Paul Jackson, the, the late John Paul Jackson, who uh, most people, uh, when they talk about dreams, they, they, they mention his name. He has a lot of videos on, on YouTube and you can go to his, um, you Google his name, you can go to his, his website. Although he's deceased, they're still running his ministry. And there's a lot of wonderful content on his website. Some of it is free, some of it you have to pay for. But if you're, if you're interested in dreams and how to understand dreams and want to, uh, uh, to advance in it, uh, uh, these are some people. James Gall, Dr. James Gall, John Paul Jackson. And it's a lady named Paula Price. She wrote a book uh, called um dream dream languages i think it's called dream dreams dream signs something like that dream had to do with dreams and i think one book the prophetic dream of the dream of the prophet something of that but her name is is paula price you google her name paula price she has some uh some material out there that's very good and all of it is talking about how to uh, understand your dreams better and then paula price's book on on dream interpretation of dream languages she kind of go with go with some of the um signs sim symbolism and what they mean and and some of it you can take and apply to the dreams that you have and uh, that you're uh, uh, examining with for other people some of it it, it it just just won't apply to you because like we said some time ago you have to build your own dream dictionary and discover what those words mean to you but some things are common like tonight, we're going to talk about the the first one is when you dream of your house. Uh, your house can can um, can represent. Let me see, uh, Mister Jackie, am I? There we go. Okay, yeah, your house. And this is and these are just common dreams. Twenty common dreams or more, but these are some common dreams that everyone who dreams about these particular. Um, items they're pretty common with most people that I've, i interpret dreams for i haven't heard anyone come up with anything different when it comes up to someone dreaming about the house a house can re represent either your church uh, but most likely it's going to represent you as an individual your house your 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 body is <laughs> the body of, of the holy spirit so your body and then in within your within your house within your body there are different compartments so sometimes you uh, you may dream about the living room and a table. Table represent a place of meeting. Uh, sometimes you'll dream in the house. You may dream about the bedroom. Dre bedroom represent place of intimacy. Um, you dream about a uh, inside the house, the bathroom. A bathroom uh, represent a place of cleansing. So it's either you taking a shower, you're being cleansed, or you know you may be using the restroom. And that is still cleansing. That's something God is trying to trying to wash out of you, trying to expel from your body. So uh, houses uh, are very uh, 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 common in pe when people talk about uh, having dreams, and and it and the context context really matters. And so, uh, if someone called you and say, "I had a dream about a house. What does it mean?" Well, I, I need more context. I need more information in order to uh, understand what the dream means and and i know you know there are times that people don't want to tell you all the, the details of it you know and 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 that's unfortunate because you can only uh, give a proper interpretation of a dream with the information that you have at the time and if you don't have all the information then you won't be able to you you won't, the, the dream will be off and you you may even feel like it's off and sometimes the things uh, the, the dream may be personal uh, like I, one person told me i don't know if it's here or another place uh, where, they, where they had a dream where they were naked and had taken a shower but they didn't want to tell the part that they were naked they were just kind of just you know really kind of going around it you know, it was like wow you know uh that dream i'm not really getting anything from that w were you like naked well uh, uh you know yes well it doesn't really mean that, that, that you know it's not that bad it's a good dream you know and like when, once they understood that it was a good thing then they you know they came out and told the whole dream my cousin is very good i have a cousin uh i i, I don't we don't we don't see each other that often so i feel pretty good about interpreting her dreams but most of the time she's sending me dreams from her congregation and there's one person in particular that sent me a dream and she left out the part that she had been. Uh, she was in the shower. She was taking a shower. She was 
she was she was naked in the dream and i just couldn't figure out what the dream it is it, like i was close but it's like ah, something's still missing but i i sent it to her anyway and sure enough she the dream was off and and um and i i called my cousin i said well talk to her i said i feel like she's leaving something out on the dream would you just ask her more about the dream and see if she would get well she said that was all I said, well I'd ask her anyway sure enough when she asked her she, she sent me a whole page of the dream and everything she left that was very critical to the understanding of the dream but you can only do what people allow you to do and and unless they understand that dreams are symbolic and the symbolism that it doesn't actually mean what you think it mean uh then then people uh, won't give you all the information many times and you just have to and then it's a trust factor too do they trust you when they're giving you a dream you know they, they feel like you're going to you know do the right thing or say the right thing so it, it's a lot of factors come into play when you're interpreting dreams but you do the best you can and um uh, um and you go from there and if, if they're pleased with it then glory to god if not then you know hey we just put a put a string on it tie it to a balloon and let it go away keep going Next, um, let's see here. Um, dream of going to school. This is uh, Apostle Stanley. You want to? Did you have a dream about going to school one time? <laughs> well, we maybe we should dream. talk about that. You had, you had a dream of me being in a classroom. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's right. It was. It was me. I'm. A, I'm going to tell you all this dream. It's okay. very pathetic. Well, you, you, are you sure what you sure you want to tell it? Yeah, I, I got no problem. You know, I, I tried I tried to protect you in the dream, so I'm trying to do it now. So, <laughs> but go ahead. You, you all understand more about it when you tell the dream. <laughs> okay. So. Well, I was dealing. We were living in Texas at the time, and uh, we were. Um, someone had given us a a, um, a CD uh, set by Robert Morris. So I don't know if you ever heard of him. It was called Dream to Destiny. It's it's ten. He believes it's, it was ten steps according to the life of Joseph that every Christian would go through these tests. It was like a pit test, prison test, purity test, prophecy test, pride test. And, and um, I remember praying to the Lord. We had went to church, and, and I remember coming home and listening to one of the CDs. And it was on the prior test. And it's like I never heard it before. And uh, something that was kind of similar similar to me. And, and before I fell asleep, I said, Lord, have I dealt with my pride? And that's what I said. Uh, and so two days later, Kelvin calls me and said, I had this dream about you. He said, I don't know if I want to tell you. I said, I said, Kelvin, come on, tell me. He said, I don't know. I don't know if I want to tell you anything. So he told me the dream. He said, I was sitting in a classroom at one of these wooden desks, you know, the old wooden desk with the little half uh, writing surface on it. Uh, he said, with somebody in standing up front. Um, and he said, uh, they came right out and said, you haven't dealt with your pride. Just like that. <laughs> and they said, you don't know how to pray. You don't know how to pray. I said, you don't, need, you don't pray right. And Kelvin yelled down in my defense. He pray in Jesus' name. <laughs> and so that, that was the dream. So when he told me the dream, I got off the phone. It was a, it was a certain conviction hit me. And I said, uh, I remember falling on my knees and weeping bitterly. And I said, Lord, that's all, that's all I had to hold on to. It was something I was happy about. Maybe had my chest stuck out about it, but I was being convicted of it. And so I have another friend named Howard Mason up in uh, Maryland. I call Howard and I'm telling him about the, about the dream. And so when I get off the phone with him, he said, well, Lord, what about me? Have I dealt with my pride? He said, he said Stanley's a pretty good guy. I feel like Stanley's a pretty good guy. What about me? He said, no sooner he said that, he said like his conviction fell on him. And he began to weep bitterly and began to repent of some things that he was prideful about. Uh, that's the that's the dream. So I feel like it was a prophetic dream, and probably it could have went on and on with the same with the same effect. Uh, 
but that's how that's the dream of me going to school or being in school. Yeah, so these these dreams mm -hmm. can can take on a prophetic edge. Um, that one was, um, you know, didn't I didn't really expect it to be the way it was. I just, matter of fact, I didn't I didn't even like the dream. <laughs> I mean, so, but you have no control over that when you, when you, when you open yourself up and say, Lord, you know, use me, speak to me. Uh, I want to be used, you know, you, you don't put no conditions on God and say, well, you can use me, but you don't, don't, don't use me this way. You know, at least, at least I don't, at least I've been taught not to do that. I just want, you know, whatever I, 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 this is what I choose to say that if, if the king of the universe uh, take the time out to put his hand on you and say, I want you to do something for me. And your first uh, reaction is to run. And I, I, I don't, I don't understand that. You know, the king of the universe asked you to do something for him and asked you to be available to do something for him. And um, your reaction is to, you know, discard that. No. So we open ourselves up and say, Lord, use us, you know, and, and uh, we don't put any conditions on how he, how he, how he's to do that. And so, um, and, and, and that way he'll give you dreams about people. I, I told you earlier about the dream about the pastor and it took me a year to, to, um, to tell him I've learned, I've learned since then I've, I've learned because I've had dreams where the Lord has really, uh, dealt with me about, uh, being complacent. Matter of fact, it was a couple of years ago, uh, in the dream, the Lord said, guard, guard against being complacent. And I was like, when God tell you, to guard against something that means that it's already happening and, and, and you, you're kind of catching up with what he just said, you know? So I was like, Oh Lord, you know, I'm, I'm complacent, you know? So, you know, I went around you know, trying to not put things in the same place. Like, let me move my coffee cup. Let me, let me put my shoes in a different place. You know, well, that's what, not what he was talking about. He was talking about something more in, in depth, you know? And so, and so a classroom is a good, good thing because it could be that God wants to teach you something that that he's been trying to train you. So anytime you see a classroom environment, you know it's all about training. And usually if the teacher, um, if it's the Holy Spirit teaching you, he's not going to bring attention to himself. He won't show his face. He'll, you always see at the back of his head or the side, but you won't get a glimpse because he doesn't want to bring attention. Usually the Lord will, will, sh will show himself. You may not remember him when you wake up, but you, you'll remember it during the time, but when you wake up, you, you'll remember the dream, but you'll remember that it was the Lord. And as people say, well, how did you know it was the Lord? It's just, some things you know in the dream, in dream, in the dream world that you you just know because of of how is how dreams are. Uh, but you'll wake up from the dream, you may not remember that you saw the Lord's face. But it's 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 um it's it's training. High school can can mean that you're in the training of the supernatural, training by the Holy Spirit. And so these are just uh, just a, a few uh, college, you know, it means something having books, uh, meaning that, you know, in a classroom where God wants you to learn. You know, I, I had a dream one time where in, in the dream, the Lord opened up my head, opened up my 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 skull. And I began to see um, I begin to see these letters come down out of heaven in, into my into my mind. And then he closed in the dream, he closed my head up and. I began to know things after that. I mean, I, I'm 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 in the dream. I'm knowing things. I could I could look at people and I could tell things about them that I didn't know. And it, it was so real, saints of God, that when I woke up from the dream, I still had that sensation that I could look at things and tell the history of it. I could look at look at people and I knew things about people. And it it, it became sort of I'll use this word sort of scary because I didn't know if I, if I was going to be stuck like that. Because you you say, well, that'd be great to know things. I, no, it it wouldn't because it, it wouldn't turn off. It, it it stayed on, and so I didn't get any any break in it. I just I knew things. I, I was, and so I asked my wife. I said, okay, she's. I say, am I still here or am I there? And she's like, what? What are you talking about? I said, am I here or there? I said, would you just pinch me? And so she reached over and pinched me on the arm. It's like, that brought me back to reality. It's like, okay, I know I'm here now. You can stop pinching me. You know, I, I'm not straight, you know. But it's it's just one of those dreams that are so real that you think you're still in the dream, you know. 
And that those dreams are very impactful as it becomes God is trying to teach you something. Moving on. Uh, dreams about, let's see here. Uh, am I not doing something right? Okay, there we go. Dreams about cars. This is a good one. Vehicles, they may indicate the calling on your life. Typically, when people have a dream about them driving a car, um, it's talking about their individual life or their individual calling in life, what God is calling them to do. And and when you, I've had people have dreams where they're in the car, but they're not driving. Someone else is driving. And the person who's driving, they can't see him. So we know that's that's the Holy Spirit or that's an angel. And so this is kind of giving a little indication that this may be a prophetic dream, a prophetic ministry that God has given. But vehicles, cars, uh, planes, buses, planes, if you're riding on a plane and the plane is flying, it's, it's typically a prophetic ministry that's happening. I, I remember having this dream uh, some years back where I, I was flying in the dream, and this may may help some people. I was flying in a dream, but I had had no control. I was like, oh, oh, you know, I had my arms out, and I was kind of leaning to the right, leaning to the left, and and I was like, oh man, if I don't get control over this, I'm I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna hit something, I'm running into something. But as the dream progressed, I became better at the dream, better at flying, you know, and I I saw in the dream I saw other people flying, and and these. People were, and it's people that I knew, some of them I knew, and they were like bumping into the mountains and, you know, hitting the ground. And and in the dream, the Lord said, you need to teach them how to fly. Matter of fact, I did a class on this in Dallas, and it was it was called Learning to Fly. And he said, you need to teach them how to fly. And so it was all about the prophetic, teaching people about the prophetic. And at the end of the dream, these kids were flying. I mean, it was very good. It was everything was in need. It was turning right, making left and right turns, and uh, and and I knew some of these people in real life, and so I had gone to them and talked to them about uh, uh, about the prophetic, and most of them were prophetic. And 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 one lady in particular, she lives in Dallas. We we kind of uh, did some mentorship. I used to do this 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 class, uh, and Apostle Stanley may remember. I used to send out a picture. And as people are giving me like five things they see about this person, you remember that Pastor Stanley? I mean, Apostle Stanley? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So we we did that for about two years. We had about 20 students. And that, that was part of my, I felt like, in teaching people. And we had about 20, 23 people that was involved. In, and, I, and I got this information from Bethel when I was at the School of the Ministry. And they would send out a picture and say, you know, allow God to speak to you about this particular person. So training people, cars, planes, buses, buses talking about uh, different types of compartments, size of ministry, buses, large buses, uh, like Greyhounds, you know, talks about a large ministry that's going to be traveling, maybe a, having mission, a mission, a mission team, a, having missionaries. And so the color of the bus has something to do with it too. What what color? You know, we know blue represent heaven. You you read throughout the Old Testament, uh, and especially in Exodus, where where Moses God is giving Moses instructions about the building of the of the tabernacle. Uh, uh, one color he used in particular is blue, purple, gold, silver, bronze. All those colors are significant, and, and you can look in the scripture and see. The colors in the Bible, you know, even on the, the high priest's uh, garment, the 12 stones, each one of those car <laughs> colors are significant. Each one of those colors are are tied to a particular tribe. And and uh, and look at the tribe and the characteristics of a particular tribe. It gives you, it kind of tells you, it, it connects with that color. And that color can tell you, uh, give you some insight about your dream based off the character of that particular tribe who that stone represent. And so that's just one of the ways that John Paul Jackson talked about colors. Uh, and so, you know, blue represent uh, heaven, the glory, gold represent, you know, glory, yellow, uh, green represent prosperity or uh, growth, uh, black represent, you know, disease, and red represent, could red represent either anger or redemption, depending on the context of the dream. 
So are you driving or someone else driving? If someone else is driving, who, who's the person driving? Is another person in the vehicle with you? Could represent that person who's going to be in ministry with you. So it's very important to pay attention to uh, dreams that are that are talking about vehicle. I, I, I know uh, Mother Mother Green and I used to talk about dreams. And, and uh, one of the dreams I, I recall um, we talked about was a dream where she was flying. And and I was I was like you know I was so excited because I knew that was a prophetic you know, and so uh, we had a, a wonderful time we were talking about. Uh, I, I guess I'm sharing something with you that uh, many of you probably don't even know, but but uh, Mother Green was a dreamer. We we talked many many times about the various different dreams that she would have, you know. And so I love that I love being able to talk to her about something that we both were passionate about dreams. So moving on, vehicles. Any any questions with the first three? No? Okay. Okay, here's one that we, we mentioned, storms. Uh, dreams about uh, concerning storms. Storms dream tend to be intercessory, spiritual warfare type dream. I, I think I related to your story about a lady from Beaumont who, who had a dream that there was going to be a hurricane or storm coming to Beaumont, Port Arthur area. And, you know, her attitude was, you know, she was excited about it. And and I was trying to get her to see, well, maybe God wants you to pray about this. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. Brother Winston, it's going to come to pass. It's going to come. I swear, it doesn't have to come to pass. But it was, a, it was that whole thing of being validated. It's like she wanted to be validated that God was using her prophetically. So I couldn't get her to see that she needed to uh, pray about this. And maybe, maybe God would stop it from happening. And so these dreams are particularly common with people who have a calling or gift in the area of discerning of spirits. The dream, these dreams often hint at uh, things that are on the horizon, are both dark and negative storms, demonic attacks. I think I told you a dream about the three hurricanes, the three tornadoes, and how these three tornadoes uh, came into one tornado, tornado, one big black tornado, uh, black dark tornado, Tornadoes represent the demons, represent the devil, represents the spirit of darkness. Uh, then there are white tornadoes. White tornadoes are good because it represents God is getting ready to rearrange some things in the community. And people who are, uh, and, and Apostle Stanley, Dr. Sherelle, you have identified the people in your congregation that are uh, intercessors, the people who are inter people, true intercessors, those who stand in between and, and, and they, they, they can, you know, stop things from happening. These people, uh, and I've ran into them. Mother Lewis is one of them. Uh, Apostle Stanley, you know her from Beaumont. Have these intercessory dreams where they are having dreams about like storms coming and and war coming and 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 battles and whatnot. And they they recognize their responsibility as an intercessor is to uh, Mother Lewis is called to be on the wall. Standing on the mm -hmm. wall, the interceding for people, interceding for for these things that they see coming. Uh, Amen. Yeah, and, and I recall having a uh, a dream, uh, Apostle Stan. I think I told you about a about standing in this tower. You remember that I went up, climb up this tower, and uh, this tower was uh, was part of a, a a a a it wasn't a castle, but it was a wall, and the tower was built into the wall. And I right. walked up these stairs. And I, I I I could see some footprints, uh, a place where the where the area had been worn down, where someone had been standing there. They had worn the, the concrete, huh? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, they had worn <laughs> the area down where where footprints had been there. And I and I got the impression just from looking at it that many people had stood in those in that spot because it was just worn down. And so I was compelled. I was I was invited to walk up and stand. And when I walked up and I stood in those footprints, then I could recall things that happened in the in the past. It's like everything that everyone who ever stood there, I knew what they knew, and I and I knew what I I had to do. I knew what my position was. And I think that was more of like an intercessory dream. But I looked out in the. Um, uh, forward, and I could see further than I could ever see. I, I could see years in the future, and I saw this storm coming, this dark cloud that was coming toward the, um, the, the, the place where I was standing. And so I turned around and I yelled to the people, hey, a, a storm is coming. You know, we need to prepare ourselves. 
And so I woke up from that dream and I was like really frantic. And I was calling people saying, you know, there's a storm coming. It was like, uh, what kind of storm? It was like, um, I didn't get that information yet. You know, it's like, um, but I was just, I, I saw it. It was so real to me. And so um, these type of storm dreams there, you know, can be spiritual warfare. It could be time to pray. Uh, hardly ever will you hear me say, well, it's, it's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to always say, let's pray. Let's let's intercede. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's see if let's see if God would just stop this from coming. You know. Amen. Yeah. Pastor, uh, it's a lady named Pastor Edith Hill. She's gone on to be with the Lord. They had a ministry, um, uh, had a wonderful church, but her ministry was mainly prayer, intercessory prayer. So every Friday at noon, they they would pray. And um, and and I believe that small group of people were stopping things from coming to Texas. Because they were very prophetic. They would see, they would, uh, when I go there, they would tell me about so many things that were happening, the visions and dreams they would have. But every Friday, uh, Pastor Edith Hill was was consistent about them praying. I don't care if it was storming outside, bad weather, whatever. They had tornadoes. That part of Texas, uh, Nacogdoches, they call it East Texas, where it's known for tor tornadoes and whatnot. And we've driven through that area and saw broken trees and battered houses and whatnot. But her little old church was still standing, still going. She's not there now. The church has been dissolved. But that building, last time I was in that area, is still standing. A lot of prayer went into the house. My my grandmother was another intercessory prayer. Uh, she would. I, I remember years ago when I was a little boy, uh, and she, she was just praying. You know, they were talking about a hurricane. I forget which one it was. I was like six years old. Um, but she said, um, and they were telling people to evacuate. And she said, no, no, we're going to stay right here. And it, it had a little rinky house, you know, they called it a shotgun house. And um, it started to rain and it started to flood. And my grandmother, she said, no water would come into this house. Wooden house up on stilts, little, little blocks, blocks, not stilts, blocks. And I, I remember as a little boy looking out the window, seeing the water up to the window but it didn't come into the house. And I'm wondering, this is a wooden house. <coughs> Water is up to the window. Then that means it's past the floor. Right. But no mm. water. We walked around the house and looked. There was no water in the house at all. And I, I mean, I couldn't, you know, I, I've never forgotten that, that she prayed and said, no water would come into this house. So what I'm saying all this, say that your prayers, God hears your prayers. God, that there, God is it's a special uh, uh, grace upon people who are called to, to intercessory prayer, that God would do things for you that he wouldn't do for other people for some reason. And my grandma was one of those. She just really was an intercessory prayer warrior. And so our tornadoes, uh, you know, the color of the tornadoes indicates what is, is if it's going to be good or bad. And so you pay a particular attention to that. All tornadoes are not bad and all tornadoes are not good. It just depends on the color and the context. Moving on. Okay. We talked about the dreams of flying. That That is uh, is a prophetic. So if you see yourself flying in a dream, uh, is dealing with the, um, with the, uh, with the supernatural, with the prophetic. Also, if you see yourself walking upstairs, going upstairs mean that you're progressing in this in in the, in the things of the spirit. Going downstairs mean that you're losing some. If something's going on. You need to kind of get it straight because you're losing. You're going downstairs, and you have to put the contacts in it too, you know. But uh, I've had both. I've had the going up the stairs, which you're really excited about. You tell everybody about the mountaintop dreams, but you don't tell anyone about their dreams of the valley. You know, it's like. I'm going downstairs, what's happening? Well, uh, something going on in your life needs to straighten up, you know. So ascending type dreams are more are, are, are more unusual yet at uh, yet edifying, you know. Remembering we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. So we 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 we, um, we we talk about those you know those flying dreams, and and then I told you about flying and and how well you're able to fly, you know. The, the, tells how uh, uh, mature you are in the spiritual gifts, in particular prophesying. So if you want to know where you are, God will give you a dream to let you know where you stand with him. But prophetic dreams where you're flying and you're not really too sure, you're kind of bumping, you're, you're not really going straight, you know, that tells you, that can kind of give you a little insight into the prophetic in your life. And all you have to do is just sharpen your skills, just, just practice more. I find that 
the practice that we need is to practice outside the church with people who you don't know. That's how you sharpen your skill, I, I believe. Moving on, any questions about this particular dream? Okay, moving on. Okay, Ben, we talked about this, dreams of being naked or exposed. You know, that's feeling revealed or shame. It's, it's, it's not that, it's not, you know, you may feel that way, you may feel embarrassed, but these dreams are not meant to produce embarrassment, but rather to draw you into a greater intimacy with the Lord and indicate place where greater transparency is required. So most times when you dream, that means that you're transparent. If you find yourself uh, in the dream, if you find yourself uh, with no clothes on in the dream and you run to put clothes on, that means that you're, that, that you are not being transparent and you should be. When you feel comfortable being with no clothes on in the dream, it means that that's how people see you. They see you as being tr transparent. When you see yourself in a dream where you're trying to put clothes on, it means that, you know, th God wants you to be more transparent, but you don't want to be that way. And so that's a battle between you and the Lord. Uh, moving on. Um, number seven would be dreams of the condition of your teeth. Often these dreams reveal the need for wisdom. Are your teeth loose, rotten, falling out? Are they bright and shining? Do you have a good bite? Are you able to chew uh, the cud? Teeth represent wisdom and often uh, teeth appear to be loose in a dream. What does it mean? What does it mean that you need, uh, it may mean that you need a wis wisdom application for something that you are about to do. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, and then, then you know, you have your, um, you know, your, your your teeth where you're you 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 you're chewing on something while you're in in a dream. You're you're chewing on something, and and that typically means that, depending on the context, it usually means that you, God has given you something or something that's coming to you in life that's causing you to think about it, to ponder it, and you need God's wisdom. So you're chewing on. You haven't made a decision about it yet. And so those are those are, are very and you, I I don't I didn't haven't had many dreams about teeth. Um, I think the last one I had was about someone who had uh, golden molders in the back, you know. And I kind of spoke to wisdom, you know, when they speak or when they when they're talking, people see their teeth, and you know, so and the and the brightness of your teeth kind of determine how uh, you know the the wisdom that you are are or needing, you know, it's like you really need God's wisdom in this because your your your, your teeth your teeth are brown, your teeth are black, you know. So you really need it, it's God needs to uh, to 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 reveal some things to you. You need to seek the Lord so He can reveal some things to you, so you can chew on the words that God has given to you, and you should be receiving wisdom and knowledge from that. And it's basically talking about chewing on the Word of God, receiving information from that. So moving on, uh, this is another good one. Dreams about past relationship. You know, I had a dream about, you know, old board friends, old girlfriends, old wives, old spot, you know, those, those dreams. How come I keep dreaming about my husband? And, uh, uh, you know, we haven't been married for 20 years. We still, I still dream about her. You know, uh, it, it, depending on the context, but usually it's some uh, un, unresolved issues of the past, you know, and if the dream is continued to repeat itself, then there's, there's something that you have not really dealt with in the past, you know, and so sometimes it can be, uh, 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 you know, a, a dream where, you know, you may need to, God may be pointing out to some, you may need to forgive someone, uh, you know, you need to, uh, uh, you know, maybe you focusing too much on that person and, 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 you know, you need to move on with your life. So it depends on the context. Seeing that person from, from your past does not, Usually mean that they that you would literally will literally renew your old relationship. And I've you know I had a situation here just recently where this person said they was dreaming about their former husband and the husband was single and they were single and does it mean that we're gonna get back together? And I said, well, no, not necessarily. You know, it, it could mean that you should leave them alone. You know, <laughs> you know, it could mean that depending on the context and that with that dream. I don't want to call the person name just in case I post this on my YouTube. Um, they didn't want to give all the information. There was a lot of stuff going on in that dream. So you're only able to interpret the dream based off the information they have at the time. And so uh, look 
more for what that person represents in your life for good or bad. A person who was bad in your life may represent God wanting you not to relapse into old habits. So old dreams, old habits, old connection, going back into the past, dealing with issues of the past and bringing them to the forward. Or you use it or whatever it happens in the past, past relationship, that person, that character, that 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 person's character uh is uh you you bring in that into your present relationship if you're married to someone else and you dream about your past husband past boyfriend then you're bringing that particular character and imposing it on your new relationship so it depends on the context is what is is really how you really understand these dreams this part when you start talking about relationship okay moving on um let's see if this is in a person in the past that's i think that's the same one okay dream of dying these dreams are not normally about the person seen in the dream in a literal sense. So you see someone dying in a dream is not uh, is not mean that that person is going to die. Now, John Paul Jackson taught that if you see a person die and you see blood in the dream, then that is an indication that, you know, that person could be in danger of dying or something happened to him. But it's a, it's a dream where God is showing you what would happen if you don't do anything. And so in that case, you want to go into intercessory prayer to stop whatever the enemy is trying to do. So these, but they are uh, symbolic about something that is in the past away or departing from your life. The type of death may be important to note. Watch though, to see if resurrections is on the other side. So uh, also dying dreams can be, you know, things that you were involved in, uh, you know, that this, that person, that old man has died and a new man has, has risen, has risen. And so you, you know, you could be dying to, to old habits. You know, you may see yourself in a dream where, you know, you, maybe you in the dream, you're, you're, you're drinking and all of a sudden in the dream, you find yourself laying in a casket. I, I had a, someone gave me a dream about that. And the person's in the castle and they say, oh, you know, I saw John's brother saw us on a landing castle and he was dead. And I said, well, what was he involved in? Well, he was you know, involved in drugs or whatever. I said, well, I don't think it means that he's going to die. I think it means that, that that part of his life is over with. That drug addiction is dead. Mm. He's dead. That drug addiction is dead. And and come to find out, the brother, that's, that's what happened. He went into a treatment facility and, and got some help. And as far as I know, he's doing well. But mm. if I had listened to her understanding of the dream, uh, I saw brother so-and-so, he died. I, oh, my God, he died? Oh, okay, well, you know, uh, prepare for his funeral then, you know? So you you, you have to kind of look at it, think about it, say, well, is this symbolic? Is, is the Lord saying something else in here? Is it Unless you see blood, then I wouldn't conclude that that person has died. Uh, like, uh, I, I had a person told me they they saw a certain person in, in you know in, at a funeral and they was dead it was in the casket and and it was it was it was like they were gone you know and i said well the contacts of it and they gave the contacts of it and i said well in that particular case i i kind of believe you you're right that they are going to die you know i think that i think that time is up i think that's what the lord is telling you that i'm up and sure enough it it happened that way so um, it depends on the context again. Moving on. Um, dreams of birth. Uh, this is a good one. This is uh, a lot of time. This is talking about ministries. So normally these dreams are not about an actual ch childbirth, but rather, uh, unless it's a prophetic dream, like uh, Minister Stephanie Game say, hey, I saw your daughter-in-law pregnant. And... Um, and uh, she, you know, she told me about that and my son and how he was acting, how my daughter-in-law was acting and and that it was a girl. That was a prophetic dream. And so even though it was symbolism, the, the, the conclusion of it was that I saw her with a baby. I saw her with a girl. And then so you you can maybe you may interpret that first as, as spiritual. Giving birth to a child could be giving birth to a ministry. So you, you you have these two interpretations. On one hand, one hand it could be a ministry. On the other hand, it could be, well, she's of age where she can give birth to children. Well, it could be she's going to give birth to a, to a baby. So depending on the context, 
the dream that Minister Stephanie had was that the contact said that she had a baby. It was a baby girl. And it was no, nothing else to indicate that it was some type of ministry. It was all about a baby being born. And so we all took it as being that my daughter-in-law was going to be pregnant. And sure enough, she is. And she'll be due in, in, um, in June or July. But on the other hand, you can have a dream about you giving birth and you looking at yourself. Well, I'm past the age of giving birth to a child. Well, you know, God, he did to Sarah. Well, come on. The likelihood of you, you know, uh, <laughs> 70 years old, going to give birth to a baby. Come on. Now. I think this is strong. this is prophetic. This is uh, this is maybe symbolic. And it's talking about a ministry that you're going to give birth to, you know, oh, yeah. or you or uh, someone else gave birth. They gave you the baby. Mm. They gave you the ministry, well, or you yeah. find yourself, and and the ministry grows, and now you have a toddler. Well, you have a ministry that has 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 some age on and is growing. Now someone is giving you a ministry that where it's not a baby, but it's a it's a toddler. It's a little bit is is a ministry that's been going on. So you you interpret the dream based off of the uh, the the context of the dream. Moving on. Any questions about that childbirth? That's a pretty. Uh, popular dream i've 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 uh, interpreted quite often about people either giving birth or someone having a baby or someone being pregnant you know and i've heard people say oh you're pregnant with you know with, you know with the things of god you know i guess you can interpret it that way you know i i, I tend to be living more focus on ministry when i see that happening that that your birth as a ministry is going to be god's going to birth and always Sometimes it doesn't look like what people think, you know, uh, the ministry that God has given me to working with the Spanish speaking community. I, I, I knew I was going to be in ministry, but I had no idea that, that, that the majority, I would say probably 85% of my ministry is uh, south of the border, you know, Mexico and Central America, you know. And so, um, but I knew that was going to, I was you know, I was going to be in ministry in that, in, through dreams. So moving on. Um, we talked about this one earlier, taking a shower. Uh, uh, you know, these are cleansing type dreams, toilets, showers, bathtub, revealed that, uh, um, well, where, where I'm at, Re revealed things that are in the process of being flushed out of your life, clean, flushed away. These are dreams. These are good dreams, by the way. Enjoy the shower of God's love, mercy, getting cleansed like you, something may happen to you throughout the week. You have your, you find yourself in a shower and God is just washing that stuff off of you. You know, you being in the work area and a lot of um, crazy stuff happening on your job and it's affecting you. How does God deal with that? At night, you may have a dream where you're in the shower and you just feel so clean, so refreshed after you've taken that shower and then you wake up from the dream feeling refreshed and, and brand new and it all took place in the dream, but the reality of it is playing out in life. But well, God did that for you. That's a dream of a shower. That's what God has washed all that stuff out of your, your, your system. Uh, taking a shower dream of falling. Oh, th this is the good dream. Uh, it was someone, I think in the first class that had a dream, uh, the sister talked about falling in the dream. Uh, these dreams may reveal a fear of you losing control of some areas of your life. Or on the positive side, that you are actually becoming free of directing, free of directing your own life. What a substance! What a substance you fall into in the dream is a major key to the proper understanding. The outstanding primary emotion of this dream will indicate which way to interpret it. Falling out. Falling can be fearful, but it also can re represent falling into the ocean of God's love. And so uh, uh, the, typically the dreams that I've interpreted dealing with falling is person losing, but feel like they're losing control in their life. You know, it's like, I don't have any control. I don't have any direction. I don't feel feel like nothing is working. And in the dream, they're, they're, it, 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 it is, is manifesting in the dream through them falling out of a plane falling from someplace safe, falling, standing on top of the mountain and then falling out of the, off the mountain. Uh, uh, it's a dream. Uh, uh, Apostle Stanley, you may remember Ken, not Ken, yeah, Ken, Ken and, and, and Brian from Dallas, Fort Worth. And Ken, Ken had this dream where he was in a car and it, he drove the car over the ledge, you know, 
Mm-hmm. And he's the car is falling and he's he's inside the car with his family. And uh, he sent me in that dream. And uh, I'm probably going to post this on uh, YouTube. But, he, you know, basically the dream was that he was out of control. He, his life was out. Yeah. His ministry was out of control. He was in the car with his family. The whole ministry is out of control. And that was a true to form falling dream. Mm-hmm. And so he got it since then he's gotten it back in control. Matter of fact, I tell you who helped him. Um the, the brother from North Carolina, the the, the prophet. Um uh you, you know him. He has a ministry, fire ministry for 20 fire. Oh um Scott. Yeah. Scott yeah. Neri. Yeah, Scott Neris. When Scott Neri <laughs> came, uh he prophesied and and now uh uh uh, uh Ken is part of uh Scott's ministry. So it brought order into the ministry. So the dream was was a good dream in the sense that it woke him up, it shocked him, right. and he was able to connect with someone who could give him more contacts to the ministry, more of a, a, a sort of a father or teacher type. So the ministry is, is doing much better now. You know, So it was a good dream to have. It woke him up and it put him on the right path. So a falling dream. Any questions about falling dreams? Okay, dreams of uh, dreams of chasing and being chased. These are typically uh, spiritual warfare dreams. These, uh, dreams where you're running. We talked about this uh, uh, one of the, the time before uh, or the first one, where someone is chasing you, and this this is typically the enemy is chasing you. And how you get out of this dream uh, is to come and uh, confront that that's chasing you. you know? And then you know, of course, dealing with your fear, your your fear and your emotions and whatnot. Uh, the answer of these questions may particularly be dominated. Um, uh, what's the word? Dominated with emotions in the dream will often help determine the direction of interpretation. Often, the Lord appears in various form, mo- motioning to us, saying, "Catch me if you can." And so basically what he's talking about that is pursuing God. Uh, uh, I, I can remember him talking about this in the class that James Gall uh, about the, the God chaser, chasing after the Lord in the dream. You know, I, I can remember a call. Uh, uh, my wife reminded me about this. She said in this, in this dream, I think it was a vision, but I was, I was walking. I was walking behind this man who I b- believed to be Jesus. And as he was, was walking down the street on the sidewalk, he got kind of remind me of a dream that uh, Apostle Wayne had here recently. I wish he was on here. He could tell it. But walking down the path and all of a sudden he uh, the man turns a corner and I don't see him any longer. And so I run to the edge of the building and look at the corner. And when I turn and look around the corner, it was him. The, and I think it was the Lord. He was looking at me like, you know, it took you too long. You too slow. You know, speed up. <laughs> you know, and I was like, man, I'm always trying to catch the Lord or speed up or I'm going too slow. I think I told you about the dream. I'm in the car and the blue lights. And you mm-hmm. say, you know, you're moving too slow. So, you know, that seemed to be uh, early in my my walk with the Lord, my ministry. It was, it was something that the Lord, and because in my, my by nature, I'm cautious. You know, I, I don't know, okay. some of you may, I'm very cautious about that. Apostle Stanley know this. I'm about not quickly jump off into something i'm like oh no that's that's my that's my personality i'm better at it now but you know in the beginning it was like very cautious so a lot of my dreams have to do with you moving too slow move faster you know Mm -hmm. turn the corner and the lord's looking like you know you need to move faster you're moving too slow you know standing on the mountain i'm looking at a a body of water one part of the water is deeper than the other. I can see the shallow end. I can see the deep end. And this guy is swimming in the water. And I'm looking at the eyes. Oh, I can do that. And just when it came out of my mouth, I'm at the bank of at, at the river. And the Lord said, next, your turn. Next. I, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not jumping in that deep part. But the strangest thing is the guy that was swimming in the shallow part, he, he swam the same way in the deep part. There was no difference. And the Lord was letting me know, it doesn't matter if you're in the shallow or the deep, you're going to swim the same. You know, so mm. chasing dreams and being chased. Going on dreams of relatives alive and dead. Uh, dreams of relatives, dead relatives, alive relatives, typically have to do with generational issues that are working your in your life. Um, and it could be you know some curse that is happening. You know, grandma was a uh, Eastern stars. 
And, you know, Eastern Stars is, you know, same thing as um, the Masonic Temple Masonry. She could be involved in that. Or like in, in places in Mexico I've gone where grandmother was a witch, you know, or in Costa Rica where his brother, his father was a warlock and he was dreaming about uh, being a warlock. He was dreaming about being a warlock so much that he actually, uh, uh, you know, was being attacked by uh, by demons. Uh, Apostle Stanley, you remember the brother from Mexico that was uh, that was uh, practicing being the warlock? He was having those strange dreams, and we was at Lily's house, and uh, he was saying how they, they were scratching him on his back. Yeah, yeah. The young boy. Yeah, 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 and and he prayed for him and cast that out of him. He was saying how that they would calling him from. Not Costa Rica, but from Venezuela, the warlocks yeah. was calling him, setting him up, and you know, and he was having dreams about that, uh, and so that had to do with curses. You know, that that was a curse being involved in witchcraft. So most likely, these dreams indicate generational curses that work in your life, uh, 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 blessings or curses. Uh, you you need some discernment to uh, uh, determine what you need to do in that particular dream. If it's a if it's a if it's a generational curse, you need to deal with that. You know, um, um, Derek Prince has a whole teaching on uh, breaking generational curses. You know, yeah. uh, green about dream about your grandparents, green green about your 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 father or your mother, uh, has to do with uh, generational or unresolved issues in the past, and the context will give you more information and and kind of lead you direct you into how. You should deal with that and, and discerning, discerning the spirit, discerning what it is that the Lord is is communicating to you through this and whether or not the dream is in color or in black and white, you know, because it could be something enemy is trying to bring up if it's in black and white about your past, you know, about your uh, your your mother, your father, your grandparents. Or it could be a discerning where God's giving you some insight about about something that happened in your past. Maybe you didn't know that this was in your your past and is hindering your future, your present and your future. So you have a dream about it and it's 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 kind of, you know, almost like an enigma, but it has something to do with your 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 past relatives. And so uh the context, the colors, you know, and then you submit it to someone, or you do it yourself or you share it with your spouse or friend or uh, apostle Stanley, uh, Dr. Sherelle and, and see what you can uh, you can make of it, you know. And um, when you can, the saints of God, if, if when God gives you a dream and you have the right interpretation of the dream, it really can advance you in life and in Amen. ministry. It really, it really Amen. can. You know, I speak from, Amen. I speak from uh, experience. It can really <laughs> advance you. So don't be, don't be scared to share, share your dreams with other people, people that you trust. Um, okay, here we go. Dreams about, um. We call them dreams called nightmares. Typically, these dreams are ones that uh, uh, happen by by children. Young children um, typically have these dreams. Uh, I don't know if I told you about this situation with his brother who was in prison. His son was having nightmares uh, every night. He wouldn't he wouldn't sleep in his own bed. Always sleep in the bed with mom. And this particular dream, this nightmare. Uh, it was, it was, it was something that he had in the room. Matter of fact, he had the Harry Potter mm. in, in his room, <laughs> in his bookshelf. And his parents kept telling me, and this went on for about a month before we actually figured it out. He had these bad dreams. He would see something in the closet, something underneath the bed. It would wake him up and he would run and cry. And so one day they called and I said, okay, what's in his bedroom? Well, nothing in the bedroom. There are always nothing is in the bedroom. I said, okay, just start from the right and, and and then dreams and interpreting dreams and nightmares you kind of have to have some patience with people you know um okay start at the right and just tell me what you see go around the room and they went to bookshelf okay what's in the book oh uh tell me what books you have what the, harry potter uh -huh. get rid of harry potter and the nightmares will stop amen so he got amen. rid of he got rid of harry <laughs> potter and uh and sure enough, the nightmare stopped. The kid is like 20 years old now, doing well. But the, the night that the day that she got rid of, he got rid of him, his wife got rid of the book. That night the kid slept in his bed. Nightmares. Mm -hmm. Dreams that bring mm -hmm. fear may reveal a generational enemy at work. Sometimes it'll show um you know, children can 
tell you things that, that, you know, oh, I saw grandma, I saw grandpa, I saw, you know, in this. What are they doing? Contacts. What are they doing? Did, did you feel fearful? No, I didn't feel. Okay, well, then we can we can go from there. If you felt fearful, then, you know, it may not have been grandma or grandpa. It may have been something else. So you, 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 um, you help the kids. You try to... You, you, you don't want to instill fear in them to, you know, to, to multiply what's happening. You, we used to tell our kids, you know, my wife and I, we always want to make sure we speaking faith to them. And if we have to tell them something, we don't want to tell them anything that's going to bring about fear mm -hmm. uh, to them to, to, to reinforce what's already happening, you know, and, and, you know, um, uh, if it may be something you need to cast out, you know, you need to see, uh, speak to, to tell a kid, hey, when you go to night, you're going to have good dreams. You're going to have godly dreams. You're not going to have any nightmares. Kind of make decrees mm -hmm. over them to to stop it from happening. Because it's, to them, it's real. To you, it may be, oh, well, you've been watching too many bad movies. That that could have some impact if you let them watch movies like that. I, you know, we didn't we didn't do that. And I, even at the church where we were attending now, I, I tell the parents, don't let your children be watching bad movies or horror movies, you know. Mm -hmm. I tell you, they, they mess. They even mess with me. I try. My daughter. I, okay, I, I'm gonna tell this. My daughter, she'll see this and she'll get upset. She, uh, this is a few years back, but she was telling me about, oh, Dad, Jeepers Creepers. You have you seen Jeepers? I said no. I, haven't. I said I heard it's a it's a song. I remember the song from years ago, Jeepers. And, and and so she said, no, oh, Dad, it's a it's a good movie. And I said, well, okay. I looked at that movie. I could not sleep for two days. I was like. Every, looking underneath the bed, you know, the, I look at the alarm clock, look like it had two red eyes. I mean, it just really disturbed my dreams. I was having nightmares, you know, from just from watching that little episode of it. To this day, I do not like Jeepers Creepers. I don't like to hear the, I don't even like saying it now. It bothers me just to say it, but I'm using it as an illustration. I won't talk about it anymore. But, for my game in here. Ran out. I was trying to see if you could help me get another membership for the year. Look, I'm on prayer night, so I'll call you back. Uh, later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was. It was. It, it it messed with me. So nightmares. You can. You can. You can. What you. What you listen to. What you see at night. You know. I mean. I I tell you another story. I'm in the hospital. I have knee replacement. Right. I'm having a knee replacement, and they give me morphine. Mm. Um, and I, my children bring my earplugs so I can listen to the scripture. I'm listening to the scriptures, re reading the, the scriptures in, in Revelation, and I'm having a nightmare. Listen to Revelation. Well, Revelation can give you a nightmare if you're not really, you know, got it right. <laughs> I'm listening to Reve Revelations, and I'm dreaming about it. That's another way for me. I, you know, and some of you may want to try this, not, not Revelation, but put some earbuds at night before you go to bed and see if you dream the scriptures. That, mm -hmm. that is so fun where you're a character in the scripture. But anyway, I'm dreaming, dreaming revelation and there's a nightmare. So I'm screaming in the hospital. The nurses come running in and I'm throwing my ear things on the floor. I'm looking for these, these creatures, you know, with a tail of a scorpion. I'm dreaming mm -hmm. about this and I could not, convinced the nurse that these things were real. I mean, I just, they are real, they're real, they're real. And so it was a combination of of the nightmare, the morphine and me dreaming and having a, you know, that type of mindset where, I, you know, I can pick up stuff like that when you dream about it or read about it. And so uh, it, it was a nightmare. I, I had a hard time sleeping in the hospital because of, because of the morphine and listening to the scriptures and dreaming about revelation became a nightmare and so i had to deal with because it was what happened was a spirit of fear came in through the dream mm -hmm. so now i'm fearful i'm in hospital i'm fearful i'm hearing sounds i'm hearing you know so when my wife came in you know she prayed for me and whatnot and i got better i don't think i told you about that did i apostle stanley nope but i tell you everything i don't know how i missed that maybe it's because i was embarrassed or something i don't know but yeah <laughs> nightmares <laughs> nightmares you know just just uh deal with your children and adults can have them to deal with the spirit of fear fear is a torment yeah you know? yeah mm -hmm. so if you're in your dreams you're having fear is 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 a motivating factor in the dream then you need to wake up and uh, out of the dream or when you wake up in your your wake life deal with the fear 
speak against that fear because it is a spirit. I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen it. Fear is a spirit. It's, it's, it's real. And it, it looks for a door, you know. And yeah. Another spirit is a spirit of death. Spirit of death, that's the spirit of death. I actually saw him when he tried to take my wife at night. Mm. He reached out them bony hands and tried to, at the foot of the bed. And the Lord woke mm. me up. I wasn't dreaming. He woke me up and said, wake up and fight. And I mm. began to fight. It, it was a spirit of death, spirit of fear. The next morning, you can talk to Sister Wednesday. The next morning, she said, you know, I need to tell you something. I said, I need to tell you something. She said, well, you tell me first. And I told her what I what I saw. And she told me what she said. I felt like I was dying last night. This was, this was some nice again. She said, I just felt like life was just draining from me. Hmm. I said, I saw him. He was the spirit of death. I said, the Lord told me, wake up and fight. Okay, how did I get off a dream and nightmares to the spirit of death? Okay, let's see. Any question about Anything we're going to we're going to move some of these we talked about already snakes uh that's that's something that we already dealt with snakes spiders bears alligators you know uh spider uh uh, uh spiders spiders have to do with witchcraft when you have a, a dreams about spiders and spider webs typically have to do by uh, uh, witchcraft you know and and, the, and of course the context is very important you know. Um, context dreams about dogs and cats we talked about that uh depending on your dream dictionary dogs can be good if you like dogs dog can be a problem if you don't like dogs same thing with cats they can be they can be sly they can be uh uh uh, uh, uh stealthy you know they can be uh mischievous you know they can be kind of hard to discern what's going on with them so we in, in in dreaming about cat you look at a cat and you're trying to determine what is the motive behind this you know you have to have some discernment in the dream the context will will, will, will kind of give you a little indication of what's happening but in, typically in my dream when i see a cat there's some deception there's mm -hmm. some okay something is going on here in, in my dream it 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 tends to mean you need to pay attention because something is deceptive is going on here in this in in this situation because the cat represent you know people say well black cats no just cats period for me with you it may be protection loyalty friendship you know maybe something good but I, I don't have good i don't have good dreams about cats and i have two cats in the house now but you know uh, we, <laughs> they're sister winston's cats uh mr jackie they're they're sister winston's sister kelly's cats you know, she love them i could do without them okay number 18 dreams are going through doors we talk about that open doors um changes coming new opportunities new advancement you know um uh dreams include elevators and escalators we indicated that higher going to higher purpose higher calling going down the escalator meaning that you losing something Something's going on. You need to change some things around in your life. Number 19, dreams about clocks and and watches. <clears throat> and I, I don't know if I put this one in there, but clocks and and watches, uh, doors uh, having knocks at the door. You're sleeping, all of a sudden you hear a knock. It's in your dream. You hear a knock. And you wake up, run to the door, in real life, open the door and no one there. You say, what is what is going on? It's similar to what's happening with clocks and dreams. It reveals that what time it is in your life. It, 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 it reveals that God is trying to get your attention. The Lord, there's a visitation that's coming, you know, and usually it's, it's a time where you spend some time in the word, reading the scriptures. And usually when you have these knocks at the door or the doorbell ring and ding dong, and you said, did I hear the doorbell ring? You know, and you're dreaming, but then you wake up from the dream because you think that is actually happening. Go to the door, look at the door, nobody there. It's, me it's meaning that God wants to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. He wants to spend time, clock, time, watch, you know. And so there's a, there's a deeper uh, meaning to this, but it depends on the context of it. And most of the dreams that uh, I've interpreted with clocks watches knocks on the door doorbells ring all has to do with encounters that god wants to encounter he's trying to get your attention he's trying to trying to alert you that he wants to encounter you 
uh, uh, in in life. I mean, dream is 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 talking about what's what he wants to do in in your wake state. Last one. Dreams about verses of scripture, and that that is is really self-explanatory. It, it whatever the scripture is, is talking about, then that's the con that that is the context. Then you interpret the dream based on what the scripture is saying. Everything everything about the understanding of the dream is that particular scripture that God has given you. And like I spoke to you earlier about dreaming while you're listening to the Bible, I try it. Just plug it in and go to sleep with it. If you can do it, find you some earplugs. Uh, I just talked with a good friend named Craig in, in, in uh, Houston and and uh, told him about these um, these uh, wireless earplugs that he can put in so he can listen to scriptures at night. And, and just to kind of, you know, a sidebar here, if you have trouble with your thought life, if you have trouble with your mind wandering and just kind of your thought life not being all together like you want to, a good way to control all of that is to uh, put find you some earbuds that you can sleep with and put the scriptures on and listen to the scriptures while you're sleeping at night. Watch how you feel when you wake up in the morning. If you can listen to it through, or just kind of stay away from the book of Revelation while you listen to them at night. Just kind of <laughs> stay with the other books. Leave Revelation while you when you're awake. But all the other books, especially the Gospels, the Psalms, uh, Proverbs, uh, Psalms, the Gospels, you know, some some Old Testament books, and you listen to those while you're sleeping, you'll be surprised how it, 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 it your dreams will become more full, more colorful, and you'll find yourself, um, and you'll start dreaming the scripture, but it then it'll take on a different meaning while you, 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 you follow the scripture as long as it's verse one, verse two, verse three. And then it'll be like a verse in between verse three and verse four. It's kind of hard to explain. You, you you have to try it and you'll see what I mean. It's like you you take on the dream, become more, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Where they become more real, fluid, more, uh, uh, as, a, as a term for it, um, lucid. The dream become more lucid. You start changing things within the dream. I probably told you more about dream than what you wanted to hear or ever wanted to know, but it's an exciting gift that God has given the body of Christ. Um, I would encourage you to just start writing them down, start asking the Lord to, to give you more and ask the Lord, if there's something going on, like in your local church, and you're trying to figure out what's happening. What's the solution to problems. Ask the Lord to speak to you through dreams and visions and, and and believe me, saints of God, if you ask him, if you yield, if you, as Bill Johnson say, if you lean into what he's doing, the Lord is faithful. If you are hungry and thirsting after righteousness, he'll, he'll give it to you. Amen. He'll give it to you. So, um, yeah, I did put door, uh, knocking at the door on there. So knocking at the door, doorbell ring, an opportunity, guests or visitor, decision-making, uh, changes, changes going to take place. Uh, even even uh, visitors had this one time the doorbell ring and the person standing at the door in, in the dream. And it was, it was an, it was an angel that came in, looked just like normal person in the dream. He was normal, didn't have anything going on other than just, just looked normal. He was a, he was a, a, a visitor. There are two ways that the enemy can gain entry into your life. This is talking about uh, uh, the, the demonic and 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 uh, even in your dreams is that two ways that he can come in through invitation. This occur when you do something, you invite the enemy in, so it can affect your dream. If you if you involved in something, you know I'm saying this to the saints of God, but you know maybe you can use this to help someone else. If you, if you do invitations, if you invite the enemy in, he'll come in. You give him access. Or if he, uh, through intrusion, the enemy just break in, break into your home, break into your life. In that case, the Lord will send angelic visitation. He'll send angels to help. You know, it's just like the situation with the danger, angel of death that came to my, my wife, the Lord. He, he woke me up. He said, wake up and fight. You know, so that was an intrusion from the enemy. And so two ways they come in invitation, you invite them in, you do something. Uh, I had a guy at my job years ago, um, mm -hmm. his name was Timothy. I'll give his first name. He came to my job. He was screaming, Miss Winston, I need to see you. Came in. He said, Miss Winston, last night, this thing came into my room, walked to the foot of my bed, red eyes and a cape. 
And he turned and walked toward my daughter's room. Mr. Winslow, what is that all about? I said, what do you have in your house? Nothing. Where did you go this weekend? Well, I went to New Orleans. What did you bring back? Oh, I brought back some African artworks and a little doll, you know, the cell. I said, that's why he came. The enemy came for his stuff. He came for his stuff. Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh, but he finding nothing in me. I said, he found, the enemy found something of of his in your home. Those dolls, those voodoo dolls that you got from New Orleans and you brought them into your house. Get rid mm -hmm. of them and you won't have any more visitation. Amen. He said, oh, you, you, uh, I said, okay, it's up to you. Get rid of them. Or don't get rid of them. I'm telling you how to get rid of them. Well, he didn't get rid of them. Mm. A month later, the whole house burned down. I, <laughs> no <laughs> joke. The whole, I'm, I'm not happy about it because I, the guy, you know, the whole house burned down. Mm, he mm. had he had art artwork that he had gotten from New Orleans down on, on Burma Street. He mm -hmm. had the little those little figurines that he had got from one of voodoo uh, voodoo priestess. All yeah. the pretty looking black art Africans with the with the sword and the uh, seal and uh, he brought all that stuff home, had it in his house, mm -hmm. and of course he had visitation. That's invitation. Yeah. He came right yeah. on in. Went on hey, down man. to the daughter room, you know, mm. and then he yeah. wanted to, you know, his eyes all, got to where his eyes all bloodshot and red because he can't sleep. He's scared, you know. Well, the house burned down. And he ended up moving in with his mother. Mm. So invitations and intrusion. Well, that's it for me, uh, Apostle Stanley. I, I don't think I have anything else. Yep, that's it. Well, that's a mouthful. That's a head. Amen. Full. That's a, yeah, that's a so. couple lessons. Cool. Amen. Also, Amen. listen. Praise God. God bless you for this. Well, yeah. I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't bore you. But uh, you know, it's just it's, one of those. It's not boring at all. Praise not God. at yes. all. <laughs> no, nope. very interesting. Not at all. Yes. Not I think at this all. Be, I think this is bringing insight and uh, awareness. Uh, like you said, those twenty types of dreams and uh, people being on the lookout and saints. It's like it's something we ought to live with. Uh, it's not that we're just going to be talking about dreams every day. Oh, dream, blah, blah. Keep up with your dreams. I mean, I got some. I got some from way back. There's some I'm still. There's some I'm still looking at. There's some I can't. They were just very impactful. Can't can't forget them. And I remember people. I remember other people's dreams, and they seemed to forget them. I say, remember you had a dream. You had a dream about this. And uh, I remember going to Bishop Battles Church, Apostle Battles Church, years ago. And, he had me do this thing about dreams. I said, well, battle, I don't really, you know, I ain't flowing like that. He said, well, yeah, it's something with you in dreams. You seem to remember everybody else's dream. Um, and he had me do a, a session. He had me do about 40 minutes uh, interpretation of dreams. And um, But what I'm saying is this, this was wonderful to me, wonderful to my soul. Uh, Amen. And we need this, praise God. And dealing with spiritual warfare we needed for um ministry praise god prophetic ministry it's just it's just wide open I, this is the question i want to i just want to pose what is the dream realm where is the dream realm mm -hmm. i'm asking you that question <laughs> mm -hmm. apostle kelvin i'm asking oh, you, you asking that me question. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was an open. I thought it was an open question. Anybody touch that? Where is the it's, dream realm? It's, it's, in, it's in the spirit world. It's in. Praise God. That's what yeah. I said. It's it's yeah. it's it's a it's someplace in the spirit, mm -hmm. not in your mind. It's, it's definitely not in your mind. No. Um, but this is this is a place in, all through the scripture, not just Solomon. God comes to 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 Joseph, and tells Joseph, you know, take the child to Egypt. And then he comes back to him the second time, or Angel did. Uh, the one who was trying to kill you, he's dead now. He, he can go back home. And so all through all through scripture, you have these people. You had uh, Pilate's wife had a dream. She mm -hmm. told her husband, "Don't, don't, don't have anything to do with that man." You know, duh. he warned him about dreams. And it's it's several other people through scripture I, that I, had dreams. I think I was telling you about Caesar. You remember yeah, when Caesar. Caesar, Caesar? You were telling me about Caesar, yeah. Yeah, how that his wife, before he was stabbed by Brutus and the Senate, 
Yeah. Uh, his wife warned him, said, I had a dream that you were going to, that, that someone was going to kill you today. Don't go to right. the Senate meeting. Right. And his pride, you know, he went there and all the senators from Rome, they stabbed him and killed him. But he was warned in a dream. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Pay attention. You know, you know something else, Apostle, just you remember this in Mexico, where we, now, I, we couldn't find this place on a map. There was no street signs, right. nothing but a sandy trail we drove mm -hmm. down. And you remember the lady say, I saw you two in a dream coming here to preach? I saw you, yeah. We <laughs> was in somebody's backyard. It's true. No, it was, it was, the, Gua it was the Guave Indians. The, the Guave Indians. Yeah, I remember. I know yeah. about this thing. Yeah. The yeah. service. <laughs> the service. No, no street signs. No, no. No, it wasn't a road that, they, no paved road. You know, it was a Guave, an indigenous Indian tribe in Mexico along the coast. I, you couldn't find it. It's not even on Google. Could couldn't find this. And San this Mateo, lady, right? San Mateo. Yeah, yeah, San Mateo. Yeah. This lady said, "I hey, saw, Matthews. I saw the two of you coming here and preaching." That's why you know it's not in your mind and your body. It's in the spirit world. She says, "I saw yeah. you two coming and you were preaching. I saw both of your faces." Wow. Yeah, that was a uh, eye opening right there. I was it like, sure wow. Was. It sure was. <laughs> and I just and, and Edward just gave me a, a a word today. He said he said you come into Mexico to preach to uh, Tabasco. I say well, why? He said there's a lady here. She's a pastor. She said she had a dream about you coming here and preaching at a place not too far from my job. And he, I said is she is she you know first thing I'm asking is she credible you know is yeah. she not kind of uh, you know she's she's a pastor. Right. He said, so, so Edward, he remembered the dream you and the lady told us about in the Guavi Indian. He said, so you're coming here to preach, Pastor. I said, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. So she, she's close to Tabasco. Yeah, she's close to Tabasco, the state of Tabasco. Yeah. Wow, that's something. It really is. Well, praise God. I hope everybody... Um, uh, have been enlightened. These three sessions has been a shot in the arm for me. That's the truth. Um, and it's so much. It's so much uh, that God has for us. Praise God. I mean, it's just so much. Praise God. And, and uh, whatever God has graced you with, to I want just to remind you to em embrace it. Ask God to help you develop it and use it to the glory of God. You know, for the help to help other people. To the building of the kingdom, to to the winning of souls, praise God, and um, because it's it's uh, it's uh, incredible stuff. It, it's just incredible. I told I told I told um, my boss about your your encounter, Kevin, with last dream, where it says uh, you covered by the blood. <laughs> she said, "Oh, oh God!" Oh, yeah. I said, and I told about the first one. I told about the little man. I said, "Now this didn't happen to him." several times you know, yeah yeah uh, where the enemy wants to you know inject fear cause yeah. him to want to back up but thank god for his keeping power and um i just want to say thank you again all of you. and uh, later on later on in the year uh, we'll probably have um, a school of healing virtual or we'll have it um, in person we can bring hell up and we're going to do a school of healing. Praise God. Um, this is this is exciting. School of healing is exciting. Mm. Uh, we we did one in uh, in Mexico. You recall? Oh, I recall. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, that, that was, was that was. Yeah. We gave our certificates and we and, had one here. Yeah, that was wonderful. Man. Good, great. And, and everybody else in the Holy Ghost was having over there. It was it was wild. Um, one night, all the people were saying things. They were having visions while they were speaking in tongues. They were having yeah. visions and stuff. Yeah. They were just yeah. uh, incredible. And I remember the girls say, oh, that's my mother. She's coming tomorrow. She's coming Saturday. And, and uh, they had all those people that were parts of their body to heat up or their body would heat up. Oh, yeah. When, that, when it seemed like the healing anointing came upon them. And uh, it was just a lot, a lot of people that had pieces upon their life. I don't know if they, they didn't know what it was, praise God. 
they started to move out. Like I said, we had people 16, from 16 years old to 77, who had never prayed for people. They began to begin to pray for people. Praise God. And you step out, you step out in faith. Hallelujah. And all the glory belongs to God. But you step Amen. out in faith and do what the scripture does. He'll, he'll give you those biblical results. That's the truth. He'll give you the biblical results. And so, again, we thank you for that. We thank Elder Betty mm -hmm. for yeah. opening prayer and always being there with us. Um, Pastor Stanley. Song, we thank Jackie for the Thanks, person. Yeah. Hmm? Pastor Stanley, um, Who? Shaniqua has a question. Okay, go ahead. She's muted. Her hand. Oh, is I was. I'm sorry. I was going to say first oh, of all. I'm, I'm, yes, I was going to say first of all. This has been very, very good because one. Well, well, two things. This week alone, immediately after I woke up from a dream, I said, "God, what does this mean?" And he immediately told me, and that's the first time that has happened. Wow! And I, it's like I got it he told me yeah. as soon as i woke up yeah. um and i meant what he what is in the dream like wow and but the second thing i have to say because something you said i don't know if it's the first the first week or second week all these the time i thought i was going crazy because i took this dream to even pastors and it was you know my aunt raised me but she did not she was abusive and i always tried to please her and things like that so we left on bad terms as i got older and I was just mostly like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to show you that I'm not going to be who you, you know, I was trying to prove something. I said, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Come back to you and say, see, I did it. But in the process, she died mm -hmm. and we didn't get to hash things up. So afterwards, I felt depressed, sad, suicidal, like a hole in my heart. I couldn't get it together. I was going on a downward spiral and it lasted for a long time. But I went to sleep one day and in the dream, she came to me and was just telling me. I am proud of you. And at the time I had just had a daughter. She said, and I see you have your daughter there. I'm mm -hmm. so proud of you taking care of her. The things she said in the dream, she said all kind of stuff. I do love you and things like that. When I woke up from that dream, I felt whole. I it's like when I woke up, I felt like a like I could, it was like I could live life, like something happened. But mm -hmm. everybody kept telling me that was a demon. They know, and I said, ain't no way a demon gonna give me that much peace. No. And they kept making me feel like I was crazy. So when you said sometimes you have dreams of closure. Closure, was, exactly. God gave that to me because of the downward spiral. And I guess he could see the road I was going to because I just started to not care. But when I woke up from that dream, I never felt that way before. Again, it was like a piece, a whole, like, yes. And people just made me, even pastors would make me feel like I was just crazy. It was like, it's a demon and that's not right. And demons don't, they do that. And it was crazy. So I'm glad you said that. So I learned so much from you. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. I think we all did. Let's give him a hand, please, everybody. Let's just give him a hand. <laughs> it was so nice. It was yes. Wonderful. <laughs> I, all, all those hand claps look like little chipmunks to give it a hand clap. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, and I appreciate I, I may Go be ahead. talking out of turn, but I think we need to send you an offering because you just gave, you just poured yourself out well, to it, us. It was my and joy. I love it. You, I hope you it, can tell. It, I love it. No, we I we don't it. try to pay you for the word, but I think we sh everybody need to just send just a little offering, a big offering, or whatever you want to send. That's just mine. How about, is you okay with that, Apostle? That's Stand wonderful. With. Kellen, give, give oh. us your cash out, Kellen. Yes, give us all, all of that. I just told okay. he just gave himself, and we should we should give. <laughs> I don't know if we'll put it in words, but it was I believe so it, but he, he, he did it. He did it for nothing. Okay. Yeah, I know he did, yeah. but he did. But yeah, we show right. our appreciation. You know, I, I show my appreciation on it. I just want to show my appreciation. I thank him. It's my There's mother and father say it's always good to say thank you. Yes. yes thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Yes. And of course, okay. I say give thanks with a grateful heart. Hallelujah. Thank well, you. I thank, I thank our apostle and our pastor for bringing him to us. Amen. Yeah. I thank him for 
It's knowing what we need at the time that we need it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's so uh -oh. good. I will email it as well. In case okay, please do that, Jackie. Amen. Okay. And I, I, I want to thank uh, again Apostle Stanley, Dr. Sherelle, uh, Minister Jackie, uh, Minister Betty, you know, Minister Stephanie. She she is so so encouraging, I tell you. And 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 it's such a what I think I thank you all for for the invitation to come and an encouragement to continue to do this. And 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 I'm just highlighting uh, uh, Stephanie because you know there's such a gift on her life, such amazing yeah, yes, prophetic yeah. anointing on her life. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the times that um, you know, I, I feel like she's my own daughter. I know probably spiritual, but the times, the things that she has shared with me about the things that God is, uh, how God is using her prophetically, you know, and I, I see that not only in her, but a lot of other young people around her age group, but they all have the same type of conversation. They speak sort of the same way. And mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this is amazing how they didn't have to start from scratch. You right. know, they didn't have to start from the beginning and, and acquire all this, this knowledge, but she has a mother and a father or a grandfather, grandmother, mm -hmm. all these people in her life, this lineage that taught her, so she's starting, you know, we talk about people's ceiling being our floor, but that literally is what happened with her is that their, their, her family's uh, ceiling became the floor <laughs> and she's, she's moving on now. She's teaching others. I mean, it's such a blessing. So I thank the Lord for uh, the lineage, the, the heritage, the, the gifting that's been uh, from Dr. Sherrell and Apostle Stanley's life and the wonderful people that he have working with him. All of you, I, I don't know all of you by name, but I, I know all of you by your faces. And so I just thank the Lord for what God has done. And I, and I really believe this, that if you, if you go out and do what God has, uh, has, has taught you and showed you that you'll see more of it. You'll have your own testimonies mm -hmm. about what God is doing. Amen. 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 Let me say uh, this, pay attention to your children. Yeah. <laughs> And um, because I'm, I remember Stephanie rolling out of the bed. She was maybe four and a half. And she said, <clears throat> we got the house. We got the house. And daddy got his Mercedes. Uh, it was black. <laughs> I, I got the Mercedes. It was gray. But, I mean, we got a house. It was a house we were uh, buying. And she rolled out of bed. And that's what first thing came out of her mouth. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow. So... Uh -huh. You know, something's been on her. I remember, I remember Sherelle from the time she was 16, I heard Sherelle prophesy. Mm -hmm. And so pay attention to your children. Pay oh, attention yeah. to them. And uh -huh. First person I heard ever prophesy was Dr. Sherelle at Free Gospel. First yeah. time I ever heard anyone. A young Baptist boy didn't know anything about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, just filled the Holy Ghost. And someone stood up and prophesied in Free Gospel for, the, for my first time seeing it operate. It was Dr. Yeah. Sherelle. And I was oh, like, she would, she would, she would a prophesy all the time. Really? Oh, yes. I, that was my first one. I was like, because everything was being revealed to me a little, little, little bit at a time. And yeah. when she prophesied, I was like, oh my, this is what it is, you know. <laughs> then to hear the people around her, the response that people gave was, I, I call it a supporting cast, you know. I was like, oh, mm. okay, yeah, this is great, yeah. Mm. So, well, I appreciate everybody staying in here. Um, y'all uh -huh. cash out Apostle Winston something and um, I appreciate y'all for hanging in here we did two hours again um, and it was just it was just food for our souls something we needed and um, uh, I'm going to ask Kelvin to pray okay. put something on y'all again before y'all go go to bed tonight and Amen <laughs> Amen so, Father we praise, thank praise you Lord. for your goodness and your mercy we thank you <laughs> for your loving kindness, Lord God. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for this wonderful gift of dreams that you have given us to speak to us in the night time, Lord God, to reveal uh, secrets of our hearts, Lord God, the, the, the revelation and information, Lord God, that you want us to know that we can pray about, Lord God, that yes, can yes. advance our life, cause us to be better than we were before. So we thank you, Lord God, because we know that you love us. You do this yes. because you love us, Lord God. You love us, Lord God, and you have given all of us, Lord God, the ministry you, of Jesus. reconciliation, Lord yes, God. You've given Lord. us all yes. something to do uh, in this world, Lord God, in the local church and outside the church. So I thank you for these, your people, Lord God, and I ask you that you will continue to speak to them, Father, 
in dreams and in visions and in supernatural encounters, Lord God. Lord God, let them have their own experiences of dreams. Let them have their own encounters, Lord God, their own visions, Lord God, giving them instructions and directions on what you want them to do, Lord God, from day to day, because we know we're living in the last days, as Acts chapter 2 and verse 17 says, we're living in the last days, and you truly are, Lord God, giving dreams to old men and visions to young men and women, Lord God. So, Father, we just bless you on tonight. We'll honor you on tonight, Lord. We thank you for each and every one that's been gathered here on this Zoom Bible study. And we just ask that you would bless them, Lord God, tremendously, Lord God. Show them what it is that you would have them to do, Father. And we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 It is. Y'all so. have a good night. All right. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, good night. 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 Good night.